If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. The first thing that we want to note about the diagram is that the y-axis is situated horizontally in this diagram as opposed to vertically as it is in most diagrams. So just take note of the position of the y-axis. And if we look in parts A and B, the electric field is acting exclusively as a j-hat component. And of course that means that the electric field will be acting exclusively in the y direction. And so the total flux in the x direction is going to equal zero and the total flux in the z direction is also going to equal zero. We only have to concern ourselves with the electric flux in the y direction. Now we'll next note that because the cube has an edge length of 1.4 meters, that means that measured from the origin here to this surface right here would be a distance of 0.7 meters and then similarly measured from the origin back to this surface here would also be 0.7 meters. And there are actually two surfaces that this electric field will pierce and so we're going to have to come up with two expressions for the electric flux. The first surface that we want to consider will be drawn in the following way. It's somewhat difficult to draw and to visualize, but it's essentially the left face of the cube. And what we'll notice is that the left face of the cube has a y-coordinate of negative 0.7. And we know it's negative 0.7 because we can arbitrarily assign this direction, the positive y direction, and then over here the negative y direction. And so technically, that surface right there has a y-coordinate located at negative 0.7 meters along the y-axis. Now, what we also want to note for this very same surface outlined in orange relates to what is known as the differential area. And when we look at that surface, we want to make sure that we project the differential area vector perpendicular to that surface and pointing away from the interior of this cube. So we'll say that again, we always want to draw our differential area vector perpendicular to the surface and pointing away from the interior of our cube in this case. So in other words, if we were to draw a differential area vector, it would point in this direction here. And that's because it forms a nice perpendicular with that orange surface and it points away from the interior of the cube. Now we can express that differential area in unit vector notation in the following way. We can say that dA with the vector symbol above it will equal dA multiplied by negative j hat. And of course the reason it's negative j hat is because it's pointing towards the negative y axis. Now for that orange surface we can finally turn to the expression for the electric flux which asks us or tells us to take the entire integral around a closed surface, which is what this little loop means, and the closed surface in this case is this square side of the cube. The integral of the product of the electric field vector and the differential area vectors. And for the electric field, at least for parts A and B, we were given this expression right here. And so we can fill that in for the electric field and then we're multiplying it by that differential area vector and we've already said that that is equal to the dA multiplied by negative j hat. Now when doing this dot product of a j hat and another j hat those essentially will cancel each other out so we can remove them. Now let's not forget that the y coordinate of this surface is located at negative 0.7 so we can actually plug in negative 0.7 for y. And of course, when we multiply that, we can see that the electric field turns out to be negative 2.1, and then we're still multiplying it by negative dA. The fact that the electric field is negative for this surface means that it is pointing to the left along the negative y-axis. 
And what we want to notice here is that the angle between the electric field vector and the dA vector is going to be zero degrees. And we'll also notice that this negative 2.1 Newton per coulomb electric field is constant around that entire surface. And so this integral can actually be re-expressed in the following way. We're going to change it from the dot product into the cosine of the angle. And as noted, the angle is zero degrees. Now, this negative and negative will cancel to be positive. And then the cosine of zero happens to be one, so we can basically cancel that away. We can now remove the 2.1 to the outside of the integral. And then finally, the integral of dA is just going to be the area of that left face of the cube. Now the area of that left face of the cube would just be one of the sides multiplied by the other side. And as noted, the side length was 1.4, so it's going to be 1.4 squared. And if we work this out, we get 4.116. Now the unit of electric flux would go back to the definition of electric flux. And we're multiplying an electric field, which is measured in newtons per coulomb, times an area, which is measured in meters squared. So the correct unit over here is going to be newton times a meter squared per coulomb. This is the electric flux that's going through the left side of the cube, but now we have to consider the electric flux going through the right side. So we're going to hold on to this value for now. Now we're going to see that for the right surface, the same arguments are basically going to hold. Just note that the y-coordinate of that red surface is positive 0.7. So when we go to calculate the electric flux, and we go to the electric field, we're going to be plugging in positive 0.7 in for the y-coordinate. And then the dA vector, as noted, has to point perpendicular to the surface and away from that Gaussian cube. So it would be pointing in this direction over here. And that's the positive y direction. So the dA over here in this case is going to be positive dA as opposed to negative dA. Now if we multiply this out, we're going to get again 2.1 and it's positive 2.1, which means that the electric field is pointing in the positive y direction when we're looking at this surface here. Now the angle between E and dA once again is zero degrees and the electric field is a nice constant value across that surface. So we can rewrite this closed integral as 2.1 times dA times the cosine of the angle between the electric field and dA. That angle, again, is zero degrees. As before, the cosine of zero is one, so we can cancel it out. We'll pull out the 2.1. We'll integrate dA, which is the area of the right side of the cube, which is the side times the side. And that's going to come out again to 4.116 Newton meters squared per coulomb. So now all we have to do to get the total electric flux through the surface is add these two fluxes together. And when we do that, we can say that the total electric flux is equal to 8.23 Newton meters squared per coulomb. So this is the correct answer to part A. Now for part B, we know that the enclosed charge within that Gaussian surface is going to equal a constant times the electric flux. This is indeed known as Gauss's law. Now this constant happens to have a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And then again, we just determined the total electric flux. So if we multiply these two values, we're going to get 7.29 times 10 to the minus 11. And then the standard unit of charge, of course, is coulombs. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now, fortunately, parts C and D are going to go a little bit quicker. What we're going to do is a little clever trick here. We're going to look at the electric field and we're going to rewrite it just slightly. So here is that electric field as given in the question. What we can do is basically distribute this j hat into the parentheses first. And what we want to notice after doing that distributing is that these two electric field values are constants, right? Because they don't have any variables in them. It's just negative four in the i hat component and then positive six in the j hat component. Because these electric fields are constant, they're going to contribute zero net flux through this Gaussian surface. And to get a better feel for that, look at the i hat, for example. We know that that refers to the x direction. 
And furthermore, look that it's negative. So let's go over to the x direction here. Let's just arbitrarily say that this was the negative direction and this was the positive direction. This electric field would be pointing in the negative direction. So if we drew an electric field line pointing along the negative x-axis, we would see that it would pierce the Gaussian surface going into the surface, but as it traveled along, it would exit the Gaussian surface and move away. So however much electric flux is entering the cube, so to speak, the same amount of electric flux would be exiting the cube. And so the overall flux from that constant electric field would be zero. And the same argument will apply to this other electric field because it too is a constant value. So we only have to consider the electric flux from this component because it's variable. But notice that's the exact same electric field that we had seen in parts A and B of the problem. It was 3.00y j hat. And that was exactly the same electric field in parts A and B. And that means the answers to parts C and D will be exactly the same. We won't go through and derive them again, of course, because that was the other part of the video. So just note to yourself that the answers for both parts C and D are the same as parts A and B. And again, that's because the electric field that varies is the same exact variable electric field in the first half of the problem.